Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today on the old case tractor here, we've got the, if you watched the previous videos, we know we've got the block stripped down to everything but the, the liners um, need to come out of the block. And um, so I took a couple of days looking around, see if I could scrounge up a a puller from anybody, nobody seems to have one. So today is the episode where we try to get these liners out of that block by using this pile of stuff here. I'm gonna see if we can fab up a, a puller um, here in the shop. I saw, full disclosure, I saw a guy on another channel um, who made a puller um, like this and, uh, and pulled some liners out. So, um, I'm going to give that a whirl and, uh, you know, get a few bucks in some old leftover iron or steel that I've got laying around, had to buy a couple of pieces, had to buy a piece of, uh, five eighths ready rod and some nuts. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see if we can make this happen. So stand by and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. So this is what I came up with. Like I say, not my design, just copied it from a guy I saw on YouTube pulling sleeves out of one of these things too. So just a couple of pieces of tubing, piece of flat stock. Down the bottom, I just used a piece of strap that I had. It's about three eighths of an inch thick. I hope it's strong enough, it should be. Um, and just, just wide enough to span that and hopefully it won't hang up on the block at all. Um, and we're just gonna, Crank down on. We got double nutted up here so we can keep the the rod from turning, and then we'll tighten right here, and we'll just see what happens. So I'll get you set up to watch here. All right. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm moving yet. I think it's bending my little piece of strap down there in the bottom. I don't think that piece is strong enough. Dang it. Yeah, that strap was a fail. <laughs> so I guess we got to go to the steel yard and get a piece of uh probably some half inch plate or something and see if i can build something all right let's see what happens here to move that's for sure oh I think it popped yeah we got a little rise out of it here up about 20 thousandths now so I hope everything
free. Okay, I think it'll just lift up out of there now, hopefully. Pulling jig will come up. There we go. Out and done. Hey everybody. So I wanted to show you what I came up with for a puller. And there's a bunch I've now I've discovered there's a number of other YouTube videos where guys have uh created this this one as well um but i just went to the the steel yard and picked up a few pieces of steel to make a puller i'll show you here i'll flip so it's nothing more than a couple of pieces of i don't know inch and a quarter square tubing fairly heavy wall i wanted to be good and stout but just a scrap piece of half inch plate um piece of five eighths ready rod i didn't buy grade eight or anything i thought about it but i'm sure it's expensive as heck so i pass on that um and uh my first attempt at the let me see let me find it for you here it's a little embarrassing i made uh the the bottom part to catch the lip of the um of the liner to pull it out i just had a couple of pieces of strap and i welded them together but boy the number four cylinder liner does not want to come out. And uh, I don't need a bunch of rude comments about my crappy welding. I'm well aware of that. I'm a woodworker, not a fabricator. But anyway, um, so that obviously wasn't going to work. It, I did manage to get one liner out with it. But I'm telling you, the number four liner just does not want to move. So back to the steel yard. Found another piece of half inch, half inch plate. And then I made this. And... Uh, so I just pulled number two liner out and it just came right out with this um, and my setup here. So this just goes on, of course. And then you've got to, then I just stacked a couple of big washers on there for good measure and then put the, the nut on, get that all nice and centered. I, it should actually probably have a little lip cut in it, but that's just too much trouble. I can... I can center it up in there and once it's on there it's not going anywhere and i made it small enough that it'll slide out without without any trouble so yeah so it seemed to work pretty good um i'm gonna put you back on the stand we'll uh we'll get this number one cylinder out but this number four i'm telling you i have pulled and pulled and that thing it moved about i don't know what's that forty thousandths or something and it just does not want to move so I haven't tried it with my new my new bottom plate though so maybe that will work better um so we'll get number one out here and see how that goes then we'll jump back to number two and uh or number four and see how that goes i i've seen some other guys talk about running a bead with a welder just straight down to to get that to kind of contract a little bit when it cools if it comes to that, then by golly, that's what I'll do. But I, I have a suspicion it's going to come out with this, uh, with this other plate. So, um, we'll see. So I'll get you back on the, on the camera stand and we'll, uh, we'll get that number one cylinder out. Okay. We're all set up here and ready to pull number one. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll just pop right out of there. Yeah, I can already see it coming. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Working good. got to go about the first maybe in half an inch or so and then it gets free of those o-rings that seal the bottom of the liner and then it just loosens right up like right now we're, we're good to go Okay, we're down to number four here, and I'll tell you, I fought and fought and fought this one. So we're gonna see if my new pulling plate uh, solves that problem. I hope that it does. I hope there's nothing wrong here. So we'll see. Oh boy, this one is tough. Ugh. pull harder on this one than any of the others but it is moving so it does look like this plate is gonna work just some worried about it oops oh yeah it's coming now there we go Holy cow. Finally it popped. Whoo wee. I'll tell you, that one had me worried. I was afraid I was gonna uh, damage something. Uh, there it comes. It's coming. Uh, yeah. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna back it off and check the bottom, make sure we're still centered. Uh, Good. All right, let's get that dude out of there. I don't know why this one was so stubborn. The others all came out relatively easily. I don't know. It's still fighting me. All the others by now were loose. some corrosion built up on the back of it or something. Just coming in fits and jerks here. But it's just about loose. There we go. Finally. Wow. Did not enjoy doing that one. Had me quite worried. Yeah, there's just some sediment. I don't know if you can see that sediment and a little bit of corrosion built up down there. I hope the block's okay, but I think it will be, so. Okay, good deal. Okay, let's get a look down inside here. What I like about all of this is there's just not a lot of sludge or anything built up in the water jacket on this motor. So that's a good sign, I, I believe. Um, this is that number four that was giving me so much trouble. It was just just needs to be cleaned up. It just had corroded in there a little bit. And so um, number three here, a little bit of stuff built up. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry. Um, in the corners. Not bad, though. Not bad at all. I'm pretty happy with that. So um, now I've got to uh, measure this... Uh, 
flange width, because evidently there's two different flange width liners that these 188s could have come with. And so I got to get that all mic'd out and uh, so that I can see about getting some liners and pistons and everything. Um, so yeah, there we are. Liners are out. There's the, uh, there's the crank. Don't really know why that occurred, why that rod journal went away, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. Well, everything else laid out here. We spent a day, I still got to clean everything up some more, but I spent a day just scrubbing in diesel and stuff and just getting most of the gunk off everything. Now I got to go back through and, and really clean them up and, and get all my get everything ready we're going to be rebuilding that uh injection pump seen a few videos about it doesn't look that daunting to me so we'll take that on power steering pump um other than i guess this cover comes out i think there's a filter in there so we're gonna get that all cleaned up we'll put a new clutch in when we go back together this one really wasn't that bad and i wasn't having i had about a half a pedal of travel but it's out so for whatever a couple hundred bucks it's going to take i'll take the flywheel over and have it resurfaced i'll get a new disc and and a pressure plate and a throw up bearing these are our injectors as i said one of them i had already replaced i'll probably just go ahead and do the other three while i'm at it and uh the cylinder head over there i got a spring compressor i'm gonna I'm going to pull the springs off and uh, take a look at the valves, see whether I actually need to send it to the machine shop or just if the valve guides are okay, I'm just going to lap those valves a little bit, put some new uh, valve stem seals on it and put it back together. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. I'll, uh, I'll uh, keep you posted as we go along. And uh, once again, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next video.